When you collect a vast amount of data, a table is not enough. A table doesn't tell you much. So what you need is a way of summarizing all this information into a simple way of understanding the structure of the sample and the structure of the underlying population. One way of doing it is by computing something called descriptive statistics. That is something that we'll cover in this video. And in the next video, I'll show you another way of doing it, which is by plotting graphs. A function is a mathematical object that takes an input and gives you an output. But in our contexts, in the context of the statistics of this course, a function usually computes one number out of the whole data set. So a statistic is a function. It's something, some mathematical construct, some mathematical formula that gives you one number out of a bunch of numbers. For instance, the mean. Actually, the mean is a special type of statistics. It's called a descriptive statistics of centrality, which are unique numbers that summarize the general trend of a sample. For instance, the mean or average is the arithmetic mean as you know it. So in that case, using a bit of mathematical notation, mu, the mean, equals 4.31. A median is the value that is in the middle once you sorted all the numbers. In that case, is 3. You can work it out. And the mode is another way of measuring centrality, which is the most frequent value. All three ways of measuring centrality give us different aspects of the sample. So for instance, in this graph here, you can observe the salary of US lawyers, the annual salary. If you plot the distribution and then you find out the means, the median and the mode, you will find that the three are very different, but it tells you different things. So for instance, the mean is about $86,000 a year. However, this value is highly influenced by some lawyers making a lot of money. So if you compute the median, actually it's lower, it's $65,000 a year. But that's not the whole story, because the few lawyers that make it to a firm make a salary of about $155,000 a year, and that's the most common salary for US lawyers, and that's the mode. Just on a different note, but keep in mind that these sort of distributions that have like two peaks are called bimodal distributions. But how about dispersion? What do I mean by dispersion? Well, you can see that different populations may have the same mean, but actually the data around the mean is distributed differently. So that's why we need something called statistics of dispersion. These are unique numbers that summarize the variability of a sample. For instance, we can simply compute the range. What is the range? Well, it's the difference between the largest and the smallest value. In this set example here, if we take 17, which is the largest, and we subtract 2, we get 15. So we can say that this sample has a range of 15. You remember we compute the median, which is the value in the middle of the sort of values? Well, we can find the value in the middle of the first half of the sort of values, and we call it the first quartile. Likewise, we can find the value in the middle of the second half of the values, and we call it the third quartile. If you have a tie and you have two positions, what you take is the average between the two numbers. This first and third quartile and the range, they don't look very interesting now, but when we go into plots, you will see that actually they are very handy. But the most important measure of variability in statistics is by far the variance. The variance is the average of the sum of squared differences. Looks like a bit difficult, and the formula, the first time you see it, it looks like a bit complex, but actually it is not. Um, so the variance, which we call it sigma square, or var of x, equals to the summation of all the squares of the difference between the mean that you compute and each value, and then you divide by the number of samples. So in that case, the variance will be 15.73. The standard deviation, which you should be familiar with, is just the square root of the variance. The reason we use the standard deviation is because it has the same units as the mean. 
but for mathematical purposes the variance is much more useful. The mean and the variance that we just compute are the mean and variance for populations. But actually, remember, we don't have populations, we have samples. And what we want to is to estimate population values from our sample. We use uh, this mathematical notation. When we talk about population, we have used Greek letters like mu or sigma. When we talk about sample values, we use Latin letters like X or S. Luckily, the mean of a sample is a good estimator of the mean of the population. However, the estimation of the variance from a sample is slightly different to the value that we would compute if we have all the values for the population. If we want to estimate the variance from a sample, what we need to do is to divide by n minus 1 instead of by n. You don't need to take this into account when you do your computations because the computer will do this for you by default. But this is based on a very important concept in statistics, which is that of degrees of freedom. We will talk about degrees of freedom in future lectures, but if you want to really know why we divide by n minus 1 instead of by n, you should miss the extra lecture at the end of this week's lecture. In the next video, I'll show you how to organize your data in graphs.